Systems biology is dealing with mechanisms. We really try to understand mechanisms of diseases because if we understand mechanisms, we can put diseases into different classes. We can stratify because this is one of the issues that we are dealing there today. Uh, so many of the diseases are heterogeneous, um, the same symptoms, but many causes. The same causes, but many diseases. And to get out of the correlation into causality, I think this is the key point in the next years. And our hope is that systems medicine, systems biomedicine, to understand the biological basis of medical uh, issues, uh, will really help us to get the diagnosis earlier and to stratify diseases into different classes. Most of the diseases are influenced by genetics, food, nutrition, our lifestyle, infectious diseases, stress, and all of these factors play a role. The problem is we don't really know which one is in which order uh, the causative one or the triggering one. So uh, I think in the next years we will very systematically look at the dynamics over time and because only when we have dynamics, a time series, I think we will understand um, how one factor influences the next step and then we might have a chance to get into the whole networks and the pathways. There's a long way to go. When we talk or when we at, um, approach problems where you can't do it alone, where you do need other disciplines. Um, and we talk to our colleagues from another discipline. We speak a different language. Um, let me give you an example. Um, when you talk to an economist about a transformation, he or she is thinking about an industrial revolution and a transformation in how the, the industry changes. When you talk to a medical doctor about a transformed cell, a transformation, it's a tumor cell. When you talk to a mathematician or an engineer, he will ask you, are you talking about a Laplace transform or Fourier transform? Very different concepts. So the same word, transformation, means something completely different. In other uh, disease areas, lots of the chronic diseases, we start to, as I said, categorize patients much better. I think the big fruits are coming in early diagnosis. So we will be able to much earlier pick up um, changes in the state of the disease or the pre-disease pre state. I think this is where the, the systems biology will come in first. And the way this is done is that we are not looking anymore at only one gene or one protein or one metabolite at a time, but we're looking at a whole signature. We now have, to, it's technology drone, so we have a lot of um, analytical methods where you can look at the whole genome, take DNA, whole genome sequencing, uh, or proteomics or metabolomics with mass spec. You can just do uh, big data points along a time series and then extract bioinformatically uh, signatures. So I think the molecular diagnosis, diagnosis will change. Um, but it's a long way. I think the bridging between basic research and the translational aspect, really bringing it into the clinic, is just, I would say, a role model here. If we see the um, topics on niacin or tryptophan and, and the microbiome influencing uh, a number of uh, inflammatory diseases, I think it, it couldn't be better. It's good that there are different clinicians, different uh, specialists, with different diseases work together. And I think this is what the cluster does very well.